Hello and welcome to HISD TV. I'm Dr. Tanya Webb and I am a teacher development specialist for English language arts. I have the honor of walking you through the HISD at home PBL plans for middle school English language arts the week of May 18th, 2020. You can find the PBLs at HISD at home on the website. Just click on the link for the dates that you are seeking and you will find the plans there. We will be walking through 6th, 7th, and 8th grade English for the week of May 18th, and I'm going to start with 6th grade ELA. Our focus is going to be procedural writing, which is a focus on informational text. So here are some of our learning targets. You will read for longer amounts of time. You will be able to write about what you learn. You will also write an informational text and a procedural text, and you will be able to participate in hands-on learning experiences. To give you an overview of the project, your responsibility is to write a short informational text about an object from last week as well as create a procedural text that explains how to use that object. Just a reminder of our weekly routines, make sure that you're reading for at least 15 minutes every single day, including on the weekends. I don't know if anyone remembers or read this book, Children of Blood and Bone, but the sequel recently came out, Children of Virtue and Vengeance, and I must say it, was just as good as the first book was. I know that there's going to be a third book in this series and I'm so excited to read more about characters that I appreciate so much with such rich world building. So be sure that you are reading for at least 15 minutes a day and you can also do lots of checking out of books using Mac and Dia. So let's get started with Monday. On Monday, the first thing that you need to do is start by reflecting on the descriptive piece that you wrote last week. You should also use your notes from the interview that you conducted. Then, using both of those texts, you're going to highlight the most important parts of each of the texts. This can include the purpose of the object as well as how it's used. Don't forget that informational writing is meant to educate the reader. It's often a combination of descriptive writing and facts. So just think about a time when you have had to explain something to someone. We want you to use the same skill, but just put it in writing. So using the information that you highlighted, we're going to ask that you draft two paragraphs that explain the object and its uses. By the end of Monday, you should have a two paragraph expository text. On Tuesday, we want you to start by working on a quick write using the following prompt. The prompt says, what is something that you could teach other people to do? What steps would you teach them? Once you finish your quick write, please choose one of the following videos to watch. We've provided you with three links, but we want you to just use one. There is a video on hands-on learning. There's another video on how hands-on learning fires up your brain. And then there's a video on community projects, again, about hands-on learning. So as you're watching one of the three videos that you've selected, make sure that you're recording information that surprises you or confirms for you some things that you already knew or ideas that you already had. Once you finish, you're going to draw a picture or create an idea web that summarizes the main points of the video. You're going to be using this information on Thursday. So by the end of the day, you should have done a quick write and you should have also done a picture or idea web. Moving on to Wednesday, we want you to choose two of the following procedural texts. You can use either a recipe from your home, something that gives you assembly instructions, whether it's for a tool, a piece of furniture, or even a toy. And you could also find a video explaining how to do something, or you could do accessing Mac and Via as in instructions. After you read or watch these instructions, take note of the following. What was the purpose of the text or video, and what do you think the creator had to consider when making it? We want you to really think about your thinking as you're diving into procedural text. What extras, such as diagrams, photos, stories, 
do authors and speakers include to engage audience? If they did not include these things, what kind of diagrams, photos, and stories could the author or speaker have included to further engage the audience? So you may recall that procedural texts explain how to do something. Using what you already know, we want you to create a T-chart. On the left-hand column of the T-chart, you're gonna list the things that every procedural text must have. And on the right hand, you're going to list the things that procedural text might have. This is an example of what that can look like. Must-haves on the left, might-haves on the right. By the end of the day on Wednesday, you're going to have a must-have, might-have t-chart, and you're going to have a completed quick write about hands-on learning. Moving on to Thursday, we want you to complete a quick write about the following. What did you learn about hands-on learning from the video you watched Tuesday and procedural text you read or viewed yesterday? List at least three facts. You're also going to begin drafting your procedural text today. So first, think about how you would teach someone to use the object you chose last week. What steps would you include and what information would the audience need to know? Think about how your object can be used and begin drafting that process. As you write, think about the following. What objects or ingredients are needed to complete the process? What needs to be prepared ahead of time? What are the steps in the process? Are any special skills or talents required? And is there any vocabulary that might be new or unfamiliar to the readers that you will need to explain? So by the end of the day on Thursday, you should have a rough draft for your procedural text. Finally, on Friday, using the writing that you've collected over the past two weeks, which should include descriptive writing, informational writing, notes, and or videos, complete the procedural text about the object that you've been ignoring. Be sure to include the items on your must-have list from Wednesday. You also might want to consider any of the following structures. You can do a how-to brochure, which is just a sheet of paper folded into three sections, or you could do a PowerPoint, think about maybe doing a how-to video, a blog style set of instructions that include a personal story, even a children's book explaining how to use the object, or another structure that's already been approved by your teacher. By the end of the day, you should have a procedural text, and you should have completed your project for the week of May 18th. So again, for sixth grade, you are going to write a short informational text about the object from last week and create a procedural text that explains how to use the object. Now, let's move on to seventh grade. Seventh grade ELA, you are also working on procedural writing and informational text. Your learning targets are to read for longer amounts of time, write about what you learn, write an informational text and procedural text, as well as participate in hands-on learning experiences. To give you an overview of the project, you are going to write a short informational text about the object from last week and create a procedural text that explains how to use that object. Just as a reminder, you should be reading for 15 minutes every day. This should be silent and independent reading at, from a book that you've chosen yourself. You can be recording anything that surprises you or any interesting language that you notice, even words that pop, off, pop from the page to you. The books that I have chosen to show are Children of Blood and Bone and the sequel, Children of Virtue and Vengeance. So, if you haven't already read this series, the first two books are done and there is another book that's coming out soon. Um, it's an extremely beautifully written book with great characterization as well as massive world building. So if you're interested in African folklore or magic, this might be the story for you. So check it out. So on Monday, you're going to begin by reflecting on the descriptive piece that you wrote last week as well as your notes from the interview that you conducted. Then using both texts, you're gonna highlight the most important parts of each text. This can include the purpose of the object as well as how the object is used. Don't forget that informational writing is meant to educate the reader and is often a combination of descriptive writing and facts. 
So think about times that you've had to explain something to someone. We're asking you to use the same skill, except we want you to put it in writing. So using the information that you highlighted, you're going to draft two paragraphs that explain a photograph for someone who has never seen one. By the end of the day, you should have an expository text with two complete paragraphs. On Tuesday, we're going to ask that you start by completing a quick write using the following prompt. What is something that you could teach other people to do? What steps would you teach them? Once you're finished with your quick write, choose one of the following videos to watch. We've given you an option of three. We just want you to choose one. All three of the videos are about hands-on learning, so select one. And then as you're watching, make sure that you record information that surprises you and confirms, for, confirms what you already knew or believed or any ideas that you already had. Once you're finished with that, we want you to draw a picture or create an idea map that summarizes the main points of the video. This is all information that you're going to be using on Thursday. So by the end of the day on Tuesday, you should have a quick write about teaching as well as a picture or idea web. On Wednesday, choose two of the following procedural texts. You can choose a recipe that you find in your home. You can choose some assembly instructions, maybe for a piece of furniture or a toy, or even something that you find online. You could choose a video explaining how to do something or even directions on how to access Mac and Via. As you are reading or watching these instructions, take note of the following. What is the purpose of the text or video and what do you think the creator had to consider when making it? What extras like diagrams, photos, and stories could the author or speaker include to engage the audience? You may recall that procedural text explain how to do something. Using what you know, we want you to create a T-chart. On the left-hand column, list the things that every procedural text must have. And in the right column, list the things that procedural text might have. This is an example of what that could look like. Must-haves on the left, might-haves on the right. By the end of the day on Wednesday, you should have a must-have, might-have t-chart as well as a quick write about hands-on learning. Moving on to Thursday, we want you to complete a quick write about the following. What did you learn about hands-on learning from the video you watched Tuesday and procedural text you read or viewed yesterday? List at least three facts. You're also going to begin drafting your procedural text today. So first, think about how you would teach someone to take a photograph or how to arrange people or objects in the photograph. What steps would you include and what information would the audience need to know? Then you're going to begin drafting that process. As you write, think about the following things. What needs to be prepared ahead of time? What are the steps in the process? Who or what should be in the picture and how should the people or objects be arranged? Do colors, lighting, and backgrounds need to be considered? Is there any vocabulary that might be new or unfamiliar to the reader? How should I explain it? By the end of the day, you should have a rough draft for your procedural text. Now we're at Friday, the last day of the week. So using the writing that you've collected over the past two weeks, including descriptive writing, informational writing, notes, and videos, complete the procedural text about the photograph that you've been exploring. Be sure to include the items that are on your must-have list from Wednesday. You might wanna consider any of the following structures. A how-to brochure, which is simply a sheet of paper folded into three different sections. Maybe a PowerPoint or a how-to video, you could also consider doing a blog style instruction set that includes a personal story, a children's book explaining how to use the object, or any other structure that's been approved by your teacher. By the end of the day Friday, you should have a completed procedural text. So just to recap, for seventh grade, you're going to write a short informational text about the object from last week and create a procedural text that explains how to use that object. Finally, we have eighth grade ELA, procedural writing or informational text as a focus for our assignments this week. And here are your learning targets. I can read for longer amounts of time. I can write about what I learn. I can write an informational text and a procedural text. 
and I can participate in the hands-on learning experience. You'll be able to do all of these things by the end of PBLs this week. To give you an overview of your project, you're going to write a short informational text about the spice from last week and create a procedural text that explains how to use it. Your weekly routines are still in effect. Independent reading in a silent place should be happening for at least 15 minutes every single day. Make sure that you're recording anything that surprises you, any interesting language that you notice, or any words that pop from the page. For me, I read Children of Blood and Bone last year, and the sequel is out, Children of Virtue and Vengeance. So I love the characters in this story, and I love the African folklore in this story, um, as well as the massive world building that the author has created. So if you haven't checked these out, this is, these are the first two books in the series. There is another one that's coming soon. I love books that are series, and I hope you are reading something interesting, or if you're looking for something interesting, you may want to consider Children of Blood and Bone series. So let's get started with Monday. You're gonna begin by reflecting on the descriptive piece you wrote last week and your notes from the interview that you conducted. Using both texts, we want you to highlight the most important parts of each text. This might include how the spice is used and where it comes from. Remember that informational writing is meant to educate the reader and is often a combination of descriptive writing and facts. Just like you've done plenty of times, we're asking you to explain how to do something to someone else. So we want you to use that same skill of explanation for a procedure and put it into paper, put it in writing. So using the information that you highlighted, we're going to ask you to draft two paragraphs that explain the spice and the uses of the spice. By the end of the day on Monday, you should have an expository text comprised of two paragraphs. Moving to Tuesday, we want you to complete a quick write using the following prompt. What is something that you could teach other people to do? What steps would you teach them? Once you're finished with your quick write, we're asking that you would choose one of the three videos that we provided, watch them and take notes. Each of the three videos is about hands-on learning, so just choose one that suits you. And as you're watching, make sure that you record information that surprises you confirms what you already know or believe or ideas that you have. Once you're finished, then you're going to draw a picture or create an idea web that summarizes the main points of the video. You're going to be using this information on Thursday. So by the end of the day on Tuesday, you should have a quick write and you should also have a picture or idea web. On Wednesday, we want you to choose two of the following procedural texts. You can choose from a recipe that you find at home, assembly instructions, perhaps for a piece of furniture or a toy, or even something that you find online, a video explaining how to do something, or even how to access Mac and Via. As you're reading or watching, take note of the following. What is the purpose of the text or video, and what do you think the creator had to consider when making it? What extras, like diagrams, photos, or stories, could the authors or speaker include to engage the audience? You may recall that procedural texts explain how to do something. So using what you already know, we want you to create a T-chart. In the left column, list the things that every procedural text must have. And in the right column, list the things that the procedural text might have. It can look something like this. Must-haves on the left, might-haves on the right. So by the end of the day on Wednesday, you should have a must-have, might-have t-chart, a quick write about hands-on learning. On Thursday, you're going to complete another quick write about the following. What did you learn about hands-on learning from the video you watched Tuesday and procedural text you read or viewed yesterday? List at least three facts. You will also begin drafting your procedural text today. So first, think about how you would teach someone how to use the spice that you chose last week. What steps would you include and what information would the audience need to know? You're going to then begin the drafting process. So as you're writing, think about these questions. What objects or ingredients are needed to complete this process? What needs to be prepared ahead of time? What are the steps in the process? 
Are there any special skills or talents that are required? And is there any vocabulary that might be new or unfamiliar to the reader? If so, how can I explain it? By the end of the day, you should have a rough draft for your procedural text. For the last day of the week, Friday, we want you to use the writing that you've collected over the past two weeks, including descriptive writing, informational writing, notes, and or videos, and complete the procedural text about the spice that you have been exploring. Make sure that you're including the items that were on your must-have list from Wednesday. And we're giving you a lot of options for how this can be structured. You can do a how-to brochure, which is simply folding a sheet of paper into three sections, or a PowerPoint, Consider doing a how-to video, maybe even a blog style instruction set that includes a personal story, a children's book explaining how to use the object, or any other structure that's already been approved by your teacher. So by the end of the day on Friday, you should have your completed procedural text. Just to give you a quick recap for eighth grade, you are going to write a short informational text about the spice from last week and create a procedural text that explains how to use it. So for the week of May 18th, 2020, we will have knocked out procedural text using several different practices and activities. Thank you all so much for tuning in to HISD TV and stay safe.